I am Alfred Okanse. Tonight, President Kufuado says he is committed to the fight against Galamse and challenges former president and the flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, to state his stance on illegal mining. Well, this has generated some conversation plus the latest on what is happening on the Brim River. We'll tell you four days after the military left that river, the Galamseyas are back in action. Well, a new patriotic party here on your election command center in parliament is at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation to Article 97 d and also to restrain the speaker from declaring vacant the seats of members of parliament who have filed to contest as independent candidates and an independent candidate seeking to contest on the ticket of the MPP. Stay with us. And we assess the ongoing online exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register and also get updates from the Interparty Advisory Committee meeting held earlier today on the same matter and other issues that came up here. As always, we have manifesto check as well and on your election command center. Some 52 days to election day, December 7, remain your election command center. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The Ghana Police Service has arrested Bishop Salifu Amwakon and Muha Amwakon, parents of the suspect driver involved in the fatal accident that claimed two lives at East Ligon on Saturday, October 12. They are currently in custody assisting with investigations. According to the police, investigations have so far established that on October 12, Elrad driving a Jaguar SUV with one other occupant rammed into a 4x4 Acura driven by Joseph Aka with four other occupants at Mensa Wood Street at Isiligon. Both cars caught fire, burning beyond recognition. Three of the five victims in the Akura were rescued, and the other two identified as Justin Agbenu and Mame Jomo, both 12 years, lost their lives. Two of the rescued victims who sustained minor injuries were treated and discharged, while the third is still on admission receiving medical attention. The suspect driver and the other occupants in the Jaguar vehicle are currently on admission at the hospital. The peaceful town of Budumburam was shattered in seconds as a routine rock blast turned into a nightmare. Rocks fell from the sky like hailstones, leaving a trail of destruction and heartbreak. Three lives were lost instantly and many more got injured. <laughs> My husband and the baby were sleeping when we heard a noise like stones. Some fell on the baby's leg and head. Then I saw the stones coming, so I went and hide myself at the corner there. So after the stones finished coming, I was coming out to see what's happened. And then I, the one stone hit at my back and I fell. Over and I may die. I was sleeping in the corridor when I heard the noise and decided to wake up. Unfortunately, I met a stone that hit my head. The two sides of parliament was thrown into spirited arguments for and against the motion filed by MP for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu, asking the Speaker of the House to declare four seats vacant following the decision of the four MPs to contest the next elections as independent candidates. Referencing Article 97 1G of the Constitution, Haruna Idrisu noted that the four MPs have made their intentions clear not to remain with their political parties on which they came to parliament. MPs from both sides took turns to articulate why they believe the Speaker should declare the seats vacant or otherwise. It has come to our notice that the Honorable Peter Kwache Aka, the current NDC member for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, has filed with the Electoral Commission to... Harun Edrisu petition, if you look at it, it means that you are supposed to refer the petition to petitions committee. What they are doing, they just want a short circuit. And that is what Honorable Atufosin is trying to do. When you decide to make a statement after people will comment, that's what you are doing. When we finish commenting, if the speaker thinks that the comments are such as to raise a serious issue, you refer the matter to a committee. Who would look at the, like the, 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 the facts? The Supreme Court. So if you, you, want, you want the speaker to give a decision in a vacuum, 
And somebody, I heard somebody say, when the speaker is informed. The speaker is informed about what? What has happened? What is the information about? It is the pleasure of somebody. More than 28,000 members of the Public Services Workers' Union are to withdraw their services on October 21. The strike will affect operations of the Electoral Commission, the Statistical Service and the National Commission of Civic Education, NCCEA. General Secretary of the Public Services Workers' Union, PSWU, Bernard Eji, says the union is demanding the payment of the allowances on the single-spine salary structure. All admitted since 2022 April, that the single spine is no longer serving its purpose. We should review it to bring it back on track. And we are not doing that two years, over two years down the line. Then what are we saying? Some people should be benefiting at the uh, expense of others. It is not right. The Black Stars still have just two points from a possible 12 after suffering a 2 nil defeat against Sudan in Libya earlier on Tuesday, casting their Afghan chances in doubt. We've always known that the team has not been um, uh, a situation where they are playing like a team. You know, it's more of individual uh, brilliance. It's simply difficult, difficult also because the time factor. They come here for a week or whatever and then they go back. So it's, 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 it's a very uh, difficult situation for any other coach. Right, as more news on 3news.com, make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight, coming up next. President Kofuado says he's committed to the fight against Galamse and challenges former President John Mahama to state his position on the matter of illegal mining. And this comes on the back of the demands and the calls by many to have the president speak on it. In fact, the president had been silent on this matter until today. He's made a statement, but that statement is directed rather at the, the former president, the flag bearer of the NDC, demanding that he states his position on this matter because, according to the president, he has had to pay the political price of this commitment to the fight against illegal mining in the past, but not presently. Take a look. Somebody who wants to be president, he can't change his mouth. One side of his mouth is saying one thing, the other side of his mouth is saying another. It is not good for him. In the 2020 election, after the government had acted on the Galamse, he went around all the mining districts of Ghana to tell them that when he comes, he's going to give amnesty to anybody who has been attacked by, on the Galamse issue by my government. So it's not surprising that MPP lost in all those constituencies. That when he comes, he will now enforce the Galamse laws. We want the NDC, four-time NDC presidential candidate to come clean, to tell us where does he stand. This is what I mean when I say that I was prepared to put my presidency on the line. I was prepared to take the political risk in dealing with them, Galamse. Well, that's President Kofuado there indicating, you know, that statement he had made earlier and referencing that as the political cost that he had to pay. In fact, there are many who have also contested that position about the, the MPP losing all the seats in the mining areas. Because what you, when you look at the results in the 2020 elections, also raises fundamental concerns about whether that is actually what happened. But one person who has been demanding that the president does more in the fight against corruption and also illegal mining and also giving the verdict of the president on this fight against illegal mining as a failed one is none other than a founder of the MPP and also a former military uh, senior officer for that matter. Toby Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo is joining us on the telephone. We had a little hitch with the Zoom connection, but is joining us on the telephone now. Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, first of all, you've, you've had the president. Let, 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 me, let me make one or two corrections. I am not a founder of the party. I am a founding member of the party. Uh, That's point number one. Uh, point number two, 
I am not a senior officer of the part of the military. I was a junior officer of the military, even though I was a doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, for that also yeah. bringing in them, but also a founding member of the MPP. That's I think right. That, that's, that's pretty clear, uh, as I they state. But first off, you had the president make, make that um, assertion about what happened in the 2020 elections and the fact that he had to pay the political cost because of his commitment to fight illegal mining and throwing the charge to the flag bearer of the NDC for that matter. You have given a verdict to his fight against illegal mining as a failed one. He doesn't seem to agree with you, at least based on what he said today. Well, I'm not surprised at all at the president's uh, statement today. I'm not surprised because <clears throat> this is very typical of Akufo Adu. Akufo Adu does no wrong. What he knows is to shift blame instead of doing the needful. Now, if you listen to him carefully, as usual, he's trying to absolve himself instead of going straight to how to fix the problem. History will surely absolve him and his bad deeds. Now, I think I've said in your program before that this particular operation is not a political operation. It must be an operation that will be handled entirely by the military. And it is an operation that just a company cannot handle it. It must be an operation that will be handled, handled by a whole battalion to be able to, 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 to have a very successful operation. You need a whole battalion for that. It was just a company. A company is just about, uh, roughly about less than even 200 at times, so soldiers. They, they cannot handle such an operation. So to me, the entire operation should be left in hands of the military. They should be given clear objectives and targets. And the rest should be left in hands of their commanders. And I can assure you, if that is done, within a week, you see a change. Because while we have an instance where the military have been there four days and they left, we all see what has happened. So it's just a waste of money and time. That is another point you didn't forget. Now, the operation to entirely be free from directions or directives of politicians. The issue facing us now is a national problem. It is not partisan in any form. It must be tackled as such. Imagine when you have what we call hemorrhage, that is blood flowing. What a doctor will do first is to find or identify the source of the bleeding. And you put that, you fix that first. After fixing that, you see that you find your way through the operation. It is the same in handling this problem. We should find the source of the problem. And the source of the problem is so clear. It suffers mind. So a halt should be made to all surface mining as soon as possible. And that is where we have to declare a state of emergency on all surface mining, river bodies and forests, license or no license. And so far, this is what I would say. I see. But that call for a state of emergency, at least from what we see now, has not been considered by the presidency because that's one that the TUs, if the organized labor made, or UTAG also made that demand, but as we speak, there hasn't been any indication that that will be granted. Yeah, it's, 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 the answer is very simple. It's because they are involved in the mining. They are involved. The report of Professor Pepo uh, Boatin mm -hmm. states that clearly. He even mentioned the names of those of them are involved. If, if the president wants us to believe him, he should come and he should, he should, uh, what you have the report published as soon as possible so that we all see. They are involved. Now, when you are involved in the situation and somebody is trying to arrest you, definitely you kick against it. That is what we are saying. They are involved. 
Those heavy caterpillars are not for those boys around, those poor boys. The caterpillars were bought or have been bought by people with money in their pockets. And these are those really running affairs of the state. That's why we call for a complete emergency, state of emergency for surface mining, let me underline that, in river bodies and all forests in the area of mining. As I said, mansions or no mansions. If you are able to stable that, then you know what to do next. This, I'm sure, will be the way the military will tackle it. Talk about now, Tomaklo, and I want you to stay with me because you made reference to an issue about what is happening now with the re-engagement of the military in this new phase of the fight against illegal mining. Well, the Birim River is one of the first places the the, the renewed Operation Halt Two um, started the operations. They bent a number of chamfans, thirteen of them, and see some ten uh, water pumps. We're learning today that this Brim River, after that operation, four days afterwards, the, the miners are back. And we're going to put on the screen what the military did uh, that was sometime last week when they, this renewed Operation Hall 2 clamped down on illegal mining started. Let's, let's look at what they did first off um, on, on the Brim River. Yes, they went there, bent a number of these chamfans and uh, these that's water pump machines, as we saw. And that's what is on the screen right now. This was part of the operation last week and destroyed a number of these equipments that the illegal miners use. Well, I would have yeah, thought that, that after, 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 after this, it would have deterred the miners. But from what we are seeing now, today, based on some videos that Adam Srem, a celebrated videographer, uh, made available to us here on TV3, he shows quite clearly through a drone video footage of what's happening on the Brim River that the miners are back. Let's put that on the screen right now. Four days after the military left the Brim River, these illegal miners are back to work. Let's see that. That's what's well, happening not, right now. I am not surprised at all about what we are seeing now. That's why I said this is not a work of a conflict. A company, just a company of a battalion. You need a whole battalion. Indeed, we have about six battalions in, uh, of infantry in this country. If we really need to correct things, if even four of them to be dispatched to that place, let, let them dispatch them there. Because you have to close all avenues that all avenues of escape. And if you're able to do that, you can pursue the individuals that are causing problems to our river bodies. If we have a whole battalion, it's not working. Send that if we have space. Space, even if we send four or even three there, definitely this thing will come to a, to, to, to an end. Because if, if a battalion goes there and leaves about 100 soldiers or 50 soldiers, the moment they leave there, that, that will be the end. The, the miners will come back. That definitely is one thing we should have, uh, we should have, uh, uh, what do you call it, expected from the, from the miners. Because... If they realize that the soldiers are no longer there, they will come back. You have to leave quite a number of soldiers to guard the place. And if you keep on doing that for a while, that, that will definitely keep them at distance. And they might not even return at all. Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, thank you for your assessment of the situation and also the recommendations you make thereof. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. It's a pleasure. Thank you, too. So always. Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, the founding member of the MPP, also served in the military now. And just for the benefit of uh, getting a clear idea of what's happening on the Brim River right now, let's put the, the latest, uh, as was uh, provided by Adam Srem, what's happening on the Brim River now, four days after the military left that area, uh, the clamp down on uh, illegal miners. Well, they are back. They're back. They're back to uh, destroying and polluting the Brim River. You see some of the chamfans that were destroyed by the military some few days ago. Well, guess what? The movements you see there are these illegal miners who are back to that Kalamse site on the Brim River. They're back working briskly. Recall government deployed this over 100 armed military personnel to various water bodies in its attempt to raid Ghana's water bodies of illegal mining activities. Well... The situation now is that when the military leaves, the miners return. And that is what Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo says. It is not a good approach. It cannot work. 
it would not make any significant impact in the fight against illegal mining in this country. And these drone shots you see there by Adam Srem clearly captures the, the, the limitations in this renewed approach to fight illegal mining in this country. That's the Birim River right now. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, here on the Election Command Center, the new patriotic party, the majority in parliament, is at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation to Article 971D and also to restrain the speaker from declaring vacant the seats of members of parliament who have filed to contest as independent candidates and an independent candidate seeking to contest on the ticket of the NPP. That's a former member of parliament. There was a lot that happened in parliament today. And this is your election command center. No, the two sides of parliament earlier today thrown into spirited arguments for and against that motion filed by uh, the member of parliament for the Tamale South constituency, Harun Idrisu, the former minority leader, contesting that point that there are four members of parliament, sitting MPs, who cannot continue to hold themselves as MPs based on the precedence of what's happened in the House in the case of the former member of parliament and that decision taken by the former Speaker of Parliament, Right Honourable, uh, that's Aaron Michael Quay. Now, this debate got a number of the lawyers who are MPs throwing back and forth. We're going to get into why the majority leader, Alexander Penyomakin, has headed to the Supreme Court seeking interpretation of Article 97. But this is what happened in Parliament earlier today. the standing orders of this house on a matter of public importance. The speaker, it has come to our notice that the Honorable Peter Kwache Aka, the current NDC member for Amenfi Central in the Western region, has filed with the Electoral Commission to contest as an independent candidate. The Honorable Amuakun Esiama, the current independent member for Formina constituency in the Ashanti region has filed with the Electoral Commission to contest also as an NPP candidate. The Honorable Cynthia Mamley Morrison, the current member of parliament for Aguna West constituency in the Central region, has filed with the Electoral Commission to contest as an independent candidate. The Speaker, the Honorable Kodu Asante, the current NPP member of for Suhum constituency in the, in the Eastern region has also filed with the Electoral Commission to contest as an independent candidate. So, Speaker, a similar matter involving Honorable Andrew Amuakun Isiama was referred to this House by the new patriotic party, the NPP, in November 2020. The NPP argued that by his decision to contest as an independent candidate whilst he was a sitting NPP member of parliament. The Honorable Esiama had vacated his seat in accordance with Article 971G of the Constitution. The then Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Michael Quay, upheld the NPP's position and took an action to enforce Article 971G of the Constitution and ruled that the NPP member of parliament for Formina Den had vacated his seat by his decision and conduct and hence ceased to be a certain member of parliament. Mr. Speaker, this ruling was not contested and has still not been contested and remained good and valid as a rule of this house. Right Honorable Speaker, we therefore call on you to enforce the existing ruling of this house based on Article 971G and H. That decision, Mr. Speaker, applies to all four ex-members of Parliament, namely Honorable Peter Kwachiaka, Honorable Andrew Amuaku Esiama, Honorable Cynthia Mamle Morrison, 
and Honorable Kodo Asante. Mr. Speaker, on the basis of this fact, this, these persons, namely Honorable Peter Kwachaka, Andrew Amwakwe Siyama, Honorable Cynthia Mamle Morrison, and Honorable Kodo Asante, are deemed to have vacated their seat accordingly. Right, Honorable Speaker? This means that currently we do not have an independent member of parliament. Well, that's the minority leader, Dr. Kessler, to forcing there. But there are a number of issues at play in this matter, and we've been looking at it quite closely. Dennis Barberi Wadam, Esquire, is joining me in studio. It's good to have you as always. Now, it's a pleasure to be here, Alfred. With, with, with this demand uh, and what is happening in Well, parliament I mentioned today. yesterday that when parliament resumes, so we're going to run into yet another long legal tussle. And it started on the floor of parliament today. I mean, it was more of the lawyers having a debate on the floor of parliament, and at the point... Uh, the majority leader had to point out to Kisla to I mean, Dr. Kisla to that this is a conversation for lawyers. So we should keep quiet and listen to them. That was just on a lighter note. Indeed. But these are the MPs that are on the table or for the reason for which we are having this discussion. Mm -hmm. As rightly listed by the right honorable member for minority leader, um, Kojo Asanti, the MP for Suhum, mm -hmm. Cynthia Mamli Morrison, MP for Agona West. We have the Honorable Andrew Esiama Amwako, who is the MP for Formina, very famous. Um, and then Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, the MP for Amenfi Central. This is an NDC MP who wants to in contest as an independent candidate. But what set the ground for the discussion was that statement that was made by the minority leader, mm. bringing to the attention of the House these MPs and what they intend to do. He makes reference to a president that has been set in the House right. and to that extent says that um, it, 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 it invariably means that they were going to leave Parliament today with the NDC now being the majority in the House and the MPP being the minority if that president was to be adhered to. Mm. But of course, that, it, it, it didn't end there. And so, um, the majority side did not take kindly to that line of argument. First was the majority leader who, in fact, um, started off by saying that the facts in issue are different. That is to say... The precedent that the NDC MPs sought to rely on, i.e., that had to do with the uh, Professor Mike O'Quee's ruling on the Formula MP back then, was different from the facts before the House today. In that, in that particular instance, as we applied to in the Formula MPs case, mm -hmm. a petition from the party was made to Parliament to notify Parliament that this person who had served notice to go independent is no longer a member of our party That's right. and to that extent invoke article 97 and declare the, the, the seat vacant. Um, the majority leader argued that in this particular instance they did not have any petition before the house to that effect. For that reason the facts were different. He went ahead to notify the house that he had already gone ahead to file a suit at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation to article 97 and also to also restrain the house from declaring the seat vacant. He also raised some procedural issues as to how they ought to have come before the House, arguing that the manner in which the minority leader came before the House, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not known to Parliament. Right. It ought to have used a different approach altogether. He also raises the issue of um, natural justice to say that even if indeed these members of Parliament in question were said to have been in uh, violation of the said article, they ought to be heard. And to that extent, if they were not even in the House in the first place, to what extent would they declare their seats vacant in their absence? So essentially, those were the issues that were raised by the majority leader. Then came the um, member of parliament for Bolgatanga East, the former deputy attorney general, um, Dominic Ayini. For him, he explained the implications of Article 97. And further, he, for him, he holds the view that the petition that the majority leader was talking about, that is to say that the parties in question ought to have sent a petition to Parliament to notify Parliament that the members are no longer part of their parties and to that extent that their seats should be declared vacant. He thought it wasn't necessary because mm -hmm. the Article 70, 97 in itself was very categorical. The circumstances under which an MP would vacate his or her seat. They also make uh, references to that Michael Quill ruling which we looked at yesterday. So like I said, it was, it was, it was a conversation amongst lawyers. Indeed. This is a former Attorney General. Um, Jogati. Jogati, yes. Mm. So for him too, he also raises the same issue about the procedure. He makes the case that procedure is just as important as a substantive matter. And right. to the extent that 
the, he didn't think that the minority came with the right procedure. Even beyond that, he also makes the case that even though there is a precedent in the House, it is quite different from what operates in the courts, where the lower courts are bound by the decision of the higher courts. He says that in Parliament, the rules allow that even when there, there's a decision, the Speaker has that liberty to depart from that and not necessarily be bound by what the predecessor had said. So largely, these were some of the arguments that were canvassed in the House, but ultimately, the Speaker said something very interesting before asking for more time to make a reasoned ruling. And if you've been paying attention to Speaker Alban Bagbin, each time a contentious issue comes before him, he asks for time to give what he says usually is a reasoned ruling. So this time he's asking for 48 hours? Yes, 48 hours, two, hour, two, two days, and yeah. he'll be back with that reasoned ruling. But before he said that, let's listen to exactly what he said. Honourable members, I have listened to the comments from members after the minority leader submitted before the House a statement under Order 93. Both the statement and the comments have raised quite serious issues of procedure and substantive law. And I think I need time to go through them. Because what I believe is that do unto others as you want others to do unto you. And when you plant evil, you reap evil. And so I want to take a few days to submit a reasoned ruling in this matter. I see that this is not only an urgent matter, but a very serious national issue. And there's good reason why the constitutions after the 1960 constitution. So please, having gone through all these constitutions, and having gone through all these parliaments in the, in the Fourth Republic, and having experienced all what you have stated, I think I'll have to do justice to the subject. And so I need to present to you a very well thought out ruling, so that tomorrow I will not either be crucified or hailed, but the right thing would have been done. This is the right thing would have been done. Yes, so do unto others what you want done to you, and that if you sow evil, evil. you reap evil. evil. As to what that means, we wait to hear from the speaker when he makes that seasoned ruling, I mean reasoned ruling. But there was also another issue that came up. I mean, what the argument of Atacha was very interesting. He started off by saying that, you know, because the minority leader ended his statement by saying that the NDC was now in the majority and the MPP in the minority, then Atacha says that if the NDC wants to be in the, minor in the majority, there's only one way to do that, and that is to prepare and go for the December 7 polls. But he, don't under, he does not understand why they want to use the speaker to get into the majority. So the speaker should not fall to the temptation. Should not fall to the temptation. And that's he also made another uh, coded, the, coded language. A biblical as reflection yes. of, of, of that, in a way. So largely, that has been it. But just to say that um, Professor Mike Eronoko has been speaking on this mm. particular matter because it is his ruling that has become the subject of contention now as being the president. Mm. But he was asked the question as to whether, I mean, indeed, if that's, he still stands by what um, he had said then, and if the action of the man, minority group is right. He says that 
because the action does not inure to the benefits. I mean, because the, 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 the action now we are dealing with mm -hmm. is not detrimental to the minority. It cannot be, it, it does not lie with them to make that move. So essentially, going essentially, back to that point about because the in his case, it was the MPP that petitioned that remove our own member. But you know why the MPP so he says that? that because the mem the, the three members are not members of the NDC, it does not lie with them to make that move to remove them. But now it raises another question yes. as well. So the uh, cabinets well are going to be interesting because there are already questions as to whether the issues about injunction, whether Parliament in itself will be restrained from even making this move again. There's also the question of even if the, if the court itself would want to get into that space, especially so that arguments have been made that parliament is the master of its own rules and all that. So the coming days is in going to fact, be very interesting. It is, it is all of these that is at play that we bring in a uh, constitutional lawyer, uh, private legal practitioner, Justice Abdullahi. Justice Abdullahi, appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. With all the issues as referenced by Dennis and the, the different sides as to now parliament having to banter with the courts and uh, this uh, whether the speaker can be restrained from going on this path and then also the interpretation and true proper interpretation of article 97 1g as the majority leader is at the supreme court seeking would all of this as it plays out truncate that process of having these four persons as members of parliament expelled from the house my understanding of the events that unfolded today is that um, on the basis of a, um, of a writ allegedly filed by the, the majority leader um, seeking to, as it were, injunct parliament from proceeding with the hearing of the application or, what, or the motion to remove the four members of parliament or the petition to remove the former members of parliament should be put on hold, more or less. I I think um, for most um, constitutional law students, um, this would clearly be a complete surprise if the speaker actually um, holds onto his horses um, simply on the basis of the writ or that has been filed at the Supreme Court. Um, and I think, once again, that is Constitutional Law 101 would tell you that um, the courts have no business in Parliament. The courts, um, um, parliamentary business, uh, closed door, uh, and closed books, as we call it, and to, to, the, to the courts. And so... Um, I at this moment, I mean, it's difficult to comment on the whatever rate has been filed, and then also projecting to what may possibly come up. But um, without any shred of imagination or doubt, um, I do not think that um, it would go far um, based on the time-tested, acceptable principles of constitutional law regarding these areas. Um, of course, we can understand that there is politics into these. I mean, there is politics, and then there, there is the the law aspect of it. But I, I do not foresee the possibility of the speaker um, simply throwing in the towel and saying that he would want to wait for the Supreme Court to make a determination of whatever has been brought before it. I, I don't foresee that happening. I see the speaker simply um, ignoring or, or throwing away the 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 um the intervention of the majority and proceeding to hear the motion um as to whether the motion would go in favor the motion itself would be um uh, decided in favor of the majority or the minority uh, it's a different issue that completely cannot be um, um uh, influenced by uh, this intervention that has been made I see. by the by the majority leader right. and Without any shred of doubt, I do not think that the the suit uh, filed at the Supreme Court should or can or ought to even prevent 
the continuous progress of the, uh, the petition in Parliament. Uh, we'll see how the coming days will look like. Uh, Justice Abdullah, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. And the 48 hours started counting already. And there's a clear reason why the NPP would not write this time around to the Speaker to have these three sitting NPP MPs expelled. It's about the numbers. This eighth parliament, 137, 138, technically, they will be shooting themselves in the foot if they decide to do that but this is one to watch coming up next we assess the ongoing online exhibition here on your election command center of the provisional voters register and also get updates from the interparty advisory committee meeting held today um, on the same matter and in fact when you see the reactions from the many of you who have attempted using this online platform would get into it and show you the process as well as what happened at the IPAC meeting earlier today. Stay with us. Back to Ghana tonight. The Electoral Commission is set to release certified copies of the voters' album to all political parties in the first week of November. That's according to the chair, Jen Adokwe Mensa, earlier at the IPAC meeting today. Take a look. The re exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register has never happened before. Indeed, this is the first time. And it demonstrates that this commission is a listening one. It is a commission that is open to receive feedback for the betterment of its stakeholders. And we would like to thank the NDC for you know, this idea of re-exhibiting the voters register. It also demonstrates that we are a transparent commission and that we work with and work with our stakeholders. We are confident with this approach and we believe that we will have a near perfect final voters register ahead of the 2024 December elections. A near perfect voters register. That's the assurance that Jen Adokwe Mensah, the chair of the Electoral Commission, is giving. A number of things that she put out there as well, including the fact that they, quote, are confident that the revised provisional voters register that the Electoral Commission will present starting today is a marked departure from the register they presented during the exhibition exercise because they have corrected all the errors that the NDC pointed out. Dr. Rashid Taku Computer is the Deputy Director of ITN Elections for the NDC. Some commendation to you, uh, Dr. Tanko, I mean the NDC, f for put, put pointing out a number of things and also asking for the re-exhibition of this provisional voters register, which is the first in our history as acknowledged by the EC chair. But that statement that all your errors have been corrected, the errors you, you identified have been corrected. Is it one that takes the box for you? Uh, Alfred, let me say good evening to your cherished viewers and to you yourself. Uh, the, the, the reality is that we are here to study the PVR given to us today. You know, we received the, the PVR today uh, at the IPAC meeting, at the close of the meeting that uh, they gave us the PVR. Uh, for now, uh, we, we, we are only giving them the benefit of the doubt. But you saw what happened at the meeting. I mean, uh, uh, we didn't take kindly to some of the things uh, that uh, went on at the IPAC meeting. And uh, chiefly among them is, uh, is, a, is a, a, the discrepancies of the valid uh, voters in the register as given by the IT consultant. Uh, I took time to uh, to, to quiz him about uh, the three di different figures as they chain out. And he tried to say because they are provisional figures. But I don't think uh, in provisional figures you should have different figures. At least you should have one provisional figure so that we'll be working on that provisional figure to arrive at a final figure. But you cannot be given several uh, different figures for us to work with. And that was what I took issues with them uh, at the IPAC meeting today. And then also, we're also very much mindful about uh, the, the issue of the transfer badge. If you look at the transfer badge that he presented today, uh, based on what he told us at the last IPAC meeting, the 332,107 transfer badge, which he sought to explain that it was meant for uh, people who were involved in multiple 
uh, uh, transfers, and and that because of that they have managed to pull it down to three hundred eleven thousand three hundred forty-four. So there was a difference of twenty thousand uh, seven hundred sixty-three, and we asked that we needed to have a data of that because this is a quantum of number that cannot be glossed over. We need to get the the data of this twenty thousand to uh, uh, appraise ourselves with what actually led to uh, this multiple transfer he was referring to. Because you can't just chain out the figure without backing it with the data. And so we needed to get a data on, on that. I mean, right. so these are issues that we want to, uh, uh, the, the electoral commission to come clean uh, with. And is there any other opportunity for you to have those answers to those questions you're asking again before election day? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, the the exhibition will end on the 19th. And I'm, I, I am happy as a political party, the NDC, we are so happy that Ghanaians will appreciate that the NDC is the one which is guiding our democracy. And and she, has, she, she, she was magnanimous in that by saying that they have to thank the NDC uh, for bringing this idea, the idea of re-exhibition and order. It was through the ingenuity of the NDC. Even this live broadcast and order is through NDC. Uh, we have brought these processes all this along. Otherwise, if we hadn't used our eagle eye, your guess would have been good as mine. And you realize that it is the NDC that should take this credit. And that's why I was telling uh, our colleague at IPAC that they should stop thanking the, the Electoral Commission, but rather thank the NDC. Because the Electoral Commission themselves were rather thanking the NDC. Right. Whilst the, our opponents were rather praising them, they didn't know that the praises rather should have been given to the NDC for having brought us to all this level and making sure that they do the right thing and clean the register and then so we can have a credible register that uh, can stand the test of time i mean we are not going to relent on our effort in that we will continue the path of making sure that the right thing is done even the online thing we've identified some small problems and it we told them they tried and did their own way of rationalizing things uh, but they themselves realize that, yes, the NDC people, we meant business. Well, well we, are, we are talking about issues on that nature. Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer, I thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And this uh, online re-exhibition is one that is going to be consistent on our radar here on your election command center because, as you indicated, the uh, revised provisional voters register statistics the Electoral Commission put out today, uh, total number of valid voters, over 18.7 million female Voters make up more, 9.689 million, and uh, males, 9,082,264. First time voters, 708,280. The special voters is what Dr. Rashid Tanko said they raise issues with 131,476. Total number of transfers, 332,107. Transfer voter list, you see the proxy voters as well. And the multiple list, those who have their names on the multiple list, 26,790. And the missing voters, individuals whose details need to be verified, 1,273, as we have it there. But a number of you have reached us indicating, you know, want to know the process of using the short code to verify the information on your voters' ID within the voters' register. This is how the process looks like. Emmanuel Samani takes us through. So the Electoral Commission announced for the general public the commencement of its re-exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register today. And so we're trying out the uh, USSD code to see how seamless it works. And so uh, you go onto your phone, dial star 711 star 51 hash. Uh, you hit the prompts. Uh, it loads a while and it says, welcome to the Mobile Voter Register Exhibition Service. You then proceed to dial in your 10 digit voter ID number as we're doing right now. And then we got a message that uh, the details has been sent to us via text. And indeed, we did receive a text message from the Electoral Commission with the name, age and registration, gender, what the polling station is, the constituency and the region. And it goes on to say to report any errors to uh, our district electoral officer. So uh, there you have it. It seems that the short code from the EC uh, actually works quite seamlessly. That's the demonstration video. It's going to be available on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and also 
uh, on, on 3 newscom So make some time and get that education as well. The online one, just for those who have internet access, the USSD for those who do not have internet access. There's also another challenge of the mobile network connectivity in some of the hard-to-reach communities. That's the next phase of the conversation on this PVR online re-exhibition. Re I want to say thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Join us same time tomorrow for another conversation. My name is Alfred Kansi. Have a good night.